Inductance. So let's think about this circuit, which consists of a battery of potential uh, epsilon and a resistor with resistance R connected uh, to it. And we have a switch here. And after the switch is closed, because of this potential difference between the two terminals, there will be a current flow in, uh, in this direction from the positive terminal to the negative terminal of the battery. The current produces a magnetic flux through the area enclosed by the loop. Let's think about what is the direction of this flux. If we follow the direction of the current with the four fingers of the right hand, it basically tells us that the flux uh, inside this circuit will be pointing perpendicular to the page uh, out of the page. So this will be the direction of the flux due to this current I. Now, <clears throat> as the current increases towards its equilibrium value, what is the equilibrium value? It's epsilon divided by R. This magnetic flux changes in time. So there will be an increasing flux that will be perpendicular to the page, out of the page. And this increasing flux will induce an EMF, induced EMF in the loop. So you can see the magnetic field lines are out of the page inside. So that's the magnetic field created by this uh, current. But this increasing flux inside the loop will be producing an EMF. OK, so let's see. When the switch is closed, the current does not change instantaneously from 0 to epsilon divided by R. As the current increases, the magnetic flux through the current loop increases. Since we have a time-varying magnetic flux, there is an induced EMF, electromotive force, due to Faraday Lenz law. So there's going to be an induced EMF and there will be an induced current. So induced current will be in the opposite direction, right? So that's going to be producing a flux into the page. This induced EMF is in the opposite direction of the battery EMF. So it will be uh, not plus minus, it will be minus plus for the induced EMF. That's called back EMF and this effect is called self-induction. Okay, so well, how much is this induced EMF? Epsilon sub L is equal to minus d phi b dt the rate of change of magnetic flux and the flux through the loop phi b will be integral b dot dA and the magnetic field due to a current element is given by Biot-Savart law mu zero i over 4 pi ds cross r hat over r square. Now this ds is in the direction of the current. So here the area of the loop is a constant. The magnetic field is time dependent. So this magnetic field is increasing in time as the current increases from zero to epsilon over r because the current is time dependent. Okay, so this induced EMF is basically uh, changing due to a change in the current which is going to cause a change in the magnetic field. So one can see that this induced EMF is proportional to minus dB dt due to the time varying magnetic field, which is proportional to current. So it's proportional to minus dI dt. All right. So we can say that this back EMF epsilon L is proportional to minus dI dt. All right. And let's call the proportionality constant L, epsilon sub L is equal to minus L di dt. Now this L is called inductance. L is called the inductance of the loop. Now, if a loop contains capital N turns, it will be minus N d phi b dt is equal to minus L di dt. So we can see that inductance is equal to capital N number of loops 
times the flux through one loop that gives us the total flux divided by the current so it is the flux divided by the current that is the inductance now we know that resistance opposes current resistance is delta v over i that's ohm's law delta v is equal to i r inductance opposes change in current why because we have inductance l is equal to minus epsilon l back emf divided by di dt it opposes the change in current capacitance opposes change in voltage the capacitance c is equal to i divided by dvc dt because q is equal to vc current is dq dt so it's basically <clears throat> i is equal to uh, c dv dt as we can see here vc is the voltage across the capacitor so we can see that c is i divided by dvc dt capacitance opposes change in voltage inductance opposes change in current resistance opposes the current the si unit of inductance n phi b over i is henry and it's equal to one volt second per ampere so this is uh, epsilon in volts this is ampere per second so it is one volt second per ampere that's the si unit of inductance okay so we have talked about closing the switch on a circuit where a resistor gets connected to a battery we see that the current uh, in this loop does not increase instantaneously from zero to epsilon divided by r as the current increases there will be an increasing flux inside the loop due, due to the magnetic field created by the current inside the loop and there will be a back emf uh, induced emf which will be opposite in direction to this epsilon and it will produce an induced current that will oppose this current that's effect is called self induction so epsilon l the induced emf is minus d phi b dt and the flux is changing because not because the area is changing but the magnetic field is changing why is the magnetic field changing because the current is changing so we can see that the induced emf is proportional to minus di dt proportionality constant is inductance and for a loop that contains capital N turns, the induced EMF is minus capital N D phi B D T, which is minus L D I D T. So L is N phi B over I. So this inductance has a unit Henry in a SI system because it is in volts. This is in ampere seconds. Volts seconds per ampere. One volt second per ampere is one Henry resistance opposes current that r is delta v over i inductance opposes changing current minus epsilon l over di dt due to faraday's law and capacitance opposes change in voltage c is equal to i divided by dvc dt so this basically brings all of these uh, circuit elements into a different context